Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here's a new product from Chameleon, a remote antenna tuner called the Char URT1 that will work with just about any HF to 6 meter transceiver without any special control cable. Now you may think this tuner looks familiar and well you'd be right, it's using almost the same case as the MAT40 remote tuner because this is designed and manufactured as a collaboration between Chameleon and MAT tuners. Later in the video, we'll take a look inside to see how similar it is. Now what's unique about the Char URT1 is that it can work with any HF transceiver that can provide at least 500 milliwatts to activate the tuning cycle. To control the tuner activation, a control box is supplied, which you install in the shack. Now this goes between your radio and the remote tuner, and it has just one button. No other cables are required as the remote tuner's power comes directly from the coax via the control box. Now specifications wise, the Char URT1 covers 1.8 to 54 megahertz and has a max input RF power of 125 watts on SSB and CW on HF and then 100 watts SSB or CW on 6 meters. Now any other modes such as FTA or digital modes should be kept at 60 watts or below. Now a full tune takes five seconds or less, but if it's recalling a frequency from one of the 16,000 available memories, then tuning should only take around 0.1 second. The only DC power input is on the control box itself, which takes 12 to 14 volts DC and must be able to deliver at least one amp. Now let's quickly just run through the available connections on the remote tuner itself. Firstly, there are actually two connections where you can connect an antenna. The first is the single wire antenna connected to what's called the Beehive connector on the top. Now the rule of thumb with non-resident wire antennas that require a tuner will be to use a length of wire that is not a half wave on any band you wish to operate on. And with some research, I found a table of lengths which would be suitable for all HF bands. Now these range from 29 feet up to 423 feet. The coupler connector is where you attach your 50 ohm coax feeder between the remote tuner and the control box back in your shack. The other SO239 connector to the left of that next to the ground lug is to be used when you want to connect the tuner to an antenna which uses a coaxial cable connection. Now you cannot use this connector and the beehive connector at the same time. The ground lug on the bottom of the remote tuner is where you attach your ground or counterpoise wires. Now the table shown here shows the recommended minimum counterpoise length, depending on the lowest band you wish to use. Now these counterpoise wires do not have to be tuned to a specific length, but must have a minimum length as shown here. Now I performed a couple of test installs with this setup and the first was to mount it on a pole behind my big satellite dish at the end of the garden. I used the mounting brackets which came in the kit and it was pretty easy to install. Now for this test I used a wire element of a length of 58 feet and then used another length of wire that was just over 27 feet for the counterpoise. Now as my garden is only around 10 meters in length from the house to the end, I had to install it as an inverted L. You can see here that the horizontal section is actually lower than my NFED half wave antenna, that's my main antenna, and what I will compare this against. Now I didn't record any QSOs on this test, but on the 40 meter band I did have one QSO with someone from Finland, and switching between the shorter antenna with the remote tuner and my NFED half wave antenna, I was surprised to be told that the remote tuner antenna was around 1s point stronger. Now I did actually see an increase on receive as well. I also performed some receive tests, switching between antennas, and then recorded the SDR software. Unfortunately, band conditions were not that great, but maybe that was a good thing when performing a comparison between two antennas. Echo Sugar One Whiskey Foxtrot. Las Vegas Lima, Whiskey Lima. Copy that. Well, thanks for uh, picking me up. Yeah, the band isn't quite doing too well here, but I'm hearing a couple stations in there, but it's not real good signals. Um, 
Anyway, my name here is Chuck, uh, Charlie Hotel Uniform, Charlie Kilo. I am located in Virginia, about 80 kilometers south of uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, with that, let me uh, pass the microphone over to you there. Don't think I got your call sign right, but... Uh on that test, the tuner was able to achieve a one-to-one -one match from 80 meters up to 6 meters or 3.5 megahertz up to 50 megahertz. Now, 160 meters, it could not obtain a tune, although most likely due to the wire lengths that I was using. Let's try something different. and This time, I'll connect the tuner to my NFED half-wave antenna wire, removing the 49 to 1 transformer and connecting the char URT1 in its place. Now I will add some counterpoise wires both around 10 meters long and one connected to a ground rod. Now as mentioned earlier we should stay away from half wave wires which in fact this wire would be a half wave on 40 meters but I wanted to try it anyway. If it performs well then I'll change the wire at a later date to a new wire with a length of around 71 feet in an inverted L as that's the longest I could get installed in the space that I have. Now to start the tuning process, you just press once on that tuning button on the controller and then immediately key the radio in FM with an RF power of between 500 milliwatts and 15 watts. If a memory is being recalled, it will tune in less than 0.1 of a second, but if it's a new frequency, then it can take up to five seconds to tune. Now the best way to check while the tuning is in operation would be to monitor the SWR meter that's built into the radio or maybe an external SWR meter in line if you have one. Now I performed a test using my ICOM IC7100 and going through all the bands from 80 meters to 6 meters, an SWR of 1.5 or below was achieved. Now 160 meters, it didn't tune. However, I think this is due to the lengths of the counterpoise wires that I used. Of course, if I had the garden space, then I would use the longest wires possible but we have to make do with what we have, right? Now I know this tuner isn't spec at working at 70 megahertz, the four meter band, but I thought I would try it anyhow, and it appeared to work, or at least fool the radio into thinking it had a good match. See, it's uh, M0DQW, M0DQW, just checking access into MB7FM, into the train power on four meters, M0DQW, over. I did also make a quick contact on 40 meters with this setup, and here's the brief QSO. CQ Castle on the air, this is Oscar November 5, Sierra Echo Lima. Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey, good afternoon sir, thanks for the reply, 5 by 9. Yeah, you're so 5x9 as well. 59, great sounding audio. The name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango, QSL. Yeah, Roger, Roger, Matt, you're in the loch. Thanks for the reply and uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye. Yeah, 73, so have a lovely afternoon. M0 DQW off and clear. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, sir. Bye-bye. Now, I don't know why this is, but any time I want to do a review video on an HF antenna, the HF bands become extremely poor. So I wondered to myself if I could make any FT8 contacts with the conditions that we have. Now using WSJTX, I went through every single band that the antenna would tune using this remote tuner. Now it took a while and I let the software put out a few CQ calls and contacts on each band. I then headed over to PSK Reporter website, which should show me a map of the world with where my signal was picked up. You can filter by call sign and band on PSK Reporter website. So first I checked 80 meters and generally speaking 80 meters is not open during the day, but I was surprised to get some pickups into Europe. I really didn't think I would make it that far as it was during the day and I could hear no SSB or any even FT8 contacts while I was listening. So I was kind of transmitting blind. Jumping up to 40 meters, which is normally pretty good during the day, we can see my signal was heard much further into Europe and a lot more stations located in the UK. So not bad for a day where HF conditions were pretty terrible. 30 meters also saw my signal being received well into Western Europe and even one there in Russia, but very limited reception in the UK. 
20 meters, however, was a completely different story, with signals being received right up near the Arctic Circle in Svalbard and then right over the ponds to the east coast of the USA, plus a good scatter in and around Europe. 17 meters, we see that my signal was being received not only in Europe and the east coast of the USA, but also right down in Australia and New Zealand. Again, not bad for a day where HF appeared dead for SSB phone contacts. 15 meters, we saw Northern Europe, one West Coast USA, but then three different stations in East Brazil picking up my signal. 12 meters again, we see East Brazil, plus a couple of receptions close to South Africa. Now, 10 meters was really interesting to see many stations in South America picking up my signal, all the way down to Argentina, and then even a few more in South Africa. Now, I did try 6 meters, but 6 meters was completely dead and closed, with only one local station that was receiving me sending my FT8CQ calls. Now, the power sitting on the radio for all of these transmissions was around 40%, which, if it's in a linear scale, then it would be around 40 watts, I guess. Now, I mentioned earlier on that I would show you inside the main tuning box, and this is what it looks like. Now, it does have some similarities to the MAT40, but the MAT40 does have a control board built into it because it's designed to work with a radio directly. So there is some differences, but as you can see, it does appear to be quite well made. And I think it performed pretty well for the test that I'd done. I do want to try and get it to work on 160 meters, which is around 1.9 megahertz. In the table that I shown you in the slide at the beginning of the video, I think I need around 17 meters of wire for a counterpoise. So I think I'm gonna have to try that maybe in a portable location, as I'm not gonna be able to get a straight counterpoise in my garden here. I guess I could try bending it around the garden to see if that makes any difference. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think of this down in the comments below. And also if you use a remote tuner for your antenna, let me know which model you use and how long you've used it and how you get on with it. Anyway guys, until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.